Now we go to the Siyum, the conclusion of the third book of Tanya, Geras Chuva, the epistle of penitence, of Chuva, return. And we uh, make a Siyum, a conclusion. So let us go into the final words of the Alter Rebbe of this part of Tanya. So we spoke about previously of the suffering that we can go through. And the Alter Rebbe gave us a great way that we can deal with that suffering that comes, whether directly from God or it comes directly um, or by agency of a human who didn't have to do it, but for whatever reason, did it. So the Alter Rebbe says now, the suffering that we go of the body um, can be a great favor. Continues with this idea of how it can be a great favor to us. And it continues with the idea of cleansing. Cleansing in this world in order that we should be spared a cleansing process called Gehenna in the world after this. After 120 years, we go before the heavenly court and uh, God wants to know how well we accomplished the things we need to accomplish. Did we await for Mashiach? Did we do uh, business with real trust in God? Did we uh, set aside times to learn Torah? And, uh, you know, did we do what we were meant to do in the mission that God puts upon us in this world. And as a result, there's going to be a scouring of the soul, a cleansing of the soul. And that cleansing is going to be much more, shall we say, painful, not a physical pain, it's actually greater than physical pain, than suffering that we have in this world. As actually um, Nachmanides explains, that the suffering that Job, Eov, went through, 70 years of real suffering, is no comparison to the to one hour of suffering that would be in Gehenna after the, our time in this world. It's no comparison. So, the Alta Rebbe says, God creates this world, built this world out of kindness, meaning that what we endure in this world is a kindness. So in, in, in Gehenna, once we leave this world, we uh, don't have to suffer. Meaning, the little bit of suffering that we'll go through here is takes away an enormous amount of suffering that we could get in Gehenna, after this world. And he gives a beautiful analogy in order to understand this idea of how is it that a little bit here of suffering that we go through is up there in the spiritual realm a huge amount it's considered a huge amount so beautiful the sun if you're standing you know by a tree and you're getting shade and the sun is out and the sun now has moved in an hour's time thousands of miles how much is the shade moved in that one hour or five minutes or whatever the time period is it can be inches maybe a foot maybe two feet what is up there thousands of miles it's moved so what is that metaphor that a little thing here in the physical reality of this world, it reflects itself in the spiritual world much greatly, much more than what we've done down here. So, for example, we bring an offering over here of an animal. Bring a physical animal as an offering over here. That is an arousal from below through the human bringing that offering of a physical fowl, dove, a pigeon, or a handful of meal that goes on the altar. And what does that do? 
it brings a purification it brings a sanctification it brings a a, a, a certain holiness to all of the animal kingdom from one little offering because the spiritual power of that little offering in the physical realm it's a small little act but in the spiritual realm the distance is great and phenomenal so therefore mitzvahs are done in the physical whether it's wearing tzitzes putting on tefillin and there it's a physical act that we do in putting on the tefillin for example or giving just a coin to charity but the way it reverberates in the spiritual realm is enormous and therefore our sages say sanctify yourself a little bit over here and you shall become holy all you do is make a little effort down here in your sanctification and it's a great measure above what we do and you know we 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 don't see it with our eyes you put on fill in you give a coin to charity the effect is enormous it's beyond what we can imagine we're so bound up in the physical that we don't appreciate that but this is the fact and likewise when it comes this is the idea of reward and punishment the reward of a mitzvah is the mitzvah itself meaning the spiritual counterpart of the physical act is the great reward which is enormous far surpasses the physical deed that you engaged in likewise punishment a little bit of some punishment we get over here its spiritual counterpart is so great that it reduces any kind of punishment or great punishment that we might have after 120 years in this world in Gehenna. Therefore, there's a great joy that you can have in the something that is punishing because you know on the spiritual realm what this has accomplished for you. Ah, it hurts. Okay, it hurts. Just like when I go to David and he stretches me, it hurts. I take it with love because I know what it's accomplishing. And that's a minimal accomplishment of the physical reality. The spiritual reality is so much greater. So I can take that with great joy. And on the positive side, is the most important thing is the reward of a mitzvah is the mitzvah meaning and this is the higher level of tshuva that not only the 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 the, the punishment is something that i can accept with love things that are punishing in my life things that are painful in my life but obviously the mitzvah then the mitzvah what's the mitzvah wanting to connect to God the desire to connect to him the desire to return to him to do the mitzvah in such a manner that I understand that the reward of it is the mitzvah itself is the connection itself and that connection as we just explained a physical simple act over here that what I gain is infinitely greater the shade moved a few inches, maybe a foot, but the sun moved thousands of miles. I might have done a simple little act over here of tshuva through doing a mitzvah. Tshuva yilah, the higher level of tshuva, wanting to return and to connect to God through the act of doing a mitzvah. And what I have as the reward for that is the connection itself which is an infinite connection far greater than the effort i put in and as the altar concludes 
The knowledge is elementary to the discerning, and those with the intelligence in this matter will discover good. With that, we conclude the um, third book of Tanya, of Geras Tshuva, the Epistle of Penitence, of Tshuva, Return, and um, Mazel Tov. Okay, so what's my take on this? What do we have from this? Last chapter. So, the whole notion that small little acts and small things that happen to us here reverberate in the spiritual realm in a so much greater way is so counterintuitive you know you don't feel that you accomplished anything just because you put a few coins into a pushka into a charity box every day you don't feel that you've accomplished anything by putting on your tefillin every day by lighting shabbat candles um, Of lighting Shabbat candles or any other kind of mitzvahs we do it and we know that it's the right thing but what the Alter Deb is giving us here a capability is to have the awareness that in fact the effect is enormous so in all of reward and punishment right the greatest reward is a mitzvah what's its reward the mitzvah itself which means the connection mitzvah comes from the word to connect the connection itself and that connection produces a much greater thing than what i have accomplished through just a simple act of not feeling studying torah we need to, to, to meditate and, 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 and to have that awareness because that awareness is going to lead us to wanting to connect to God. That it's enormous. And sometimes we're going to actually sense that the little I've done has a great accomplishment. Has an enormous accomplishment. Sometimes we see it in the domino effect. But here it's in the spiritual realm and likewise even those things that are punishing if i can ex if i recognize those things that are punishing is also coming from god who is good and it's coming from my benefit so it's going to lead me to a greater chuva a, re a greater return to god a greater desire to connect and in even that punishing experience that might have been even at the hands of someone who i can point at them and say you're not nice. <laughs> that was really even evil. And you don't do that. I mean, you definitely don't do it to start with. It's not your first response. You don't even respond. Or you don't respond in kind. Or you don't respond. Or better, better you do it with great joy. That, that, that punishment is really bringing a cleansing that I would need to have much greater, more intense cleansing if it's not now in this lifetime when I leave this world and to go through the cleansing process in the, before going into Gan Eden. So God's doing us a kindness. You can look at that that way. Um, boy, we're going to lead a different kind of life. We're a different kind of people. We're not really, um, and, we're, and, and we're totally in control of our lives. Total mastery of, um, total mastery of ourselves. I don't know, total might be an exaggeration, but yeah, if we, if we can do this, then probably it is.
Okay. Questions? Comments? Thoughts? Um, I'm going to go first to Facebook, and then we're going to go to... All right, let's see if there's any questions. Davida, please help me. Are sins down here amplified in the heavenly realm? Yes, of course. So much so that we affect God. Affect, affect the Shekhinah. Absolutely. Um, Aline and Alice. Okay, let me get... Are there two question marks before? Yes, Arlene. How can one be completely cleansed? Um, I, you know, that's God's job. I have no idea how to answer that. Um, the only thing that I can tell you is that what the Altareb is giving us is mastery over our lives. And when something negative happens, if we can see it as part of a cleansing process, so hopefully, you know, we will... Um, It'll just serve as that purpose. So not only are we saving for the future, but I have great joy in the present. I can have great joy at least. That's pretty powerful. So completely cleansed if you're righteous. You're completely cleansed. So I don't know if that's for us to go there. Um, I don't have any other questions because uh, I lost the feed. So, I, I answered uh, Arlene, Alice, you're going to have to put it up again, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, let us go here to Michael. Michael. Please Shalom share with us. Thank you. Uh, Rabbi, I do have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Uh, Okay, so I'll get with the easiest one, I think. Though I might be too young to ask this one. Uh, does this magnification in the spiritual realm also apply in Kabbalah? Well, this is based on Kabbalah. The, the, the basis of this is, is Kabbalah is from the Zohar. So this is where, where it stems from. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and now the much harder one, at least from my point of view. You were talking about... Uh, us walking down on the street and, you know, seeing, uh, getting hurt by anti-Semitic people, but we ignore them because we know they're ignorant. What if I unwillingly let the anti-Semite the anti uh, hurt me? Is he considered to be an agent of God in that case? Well, he's for sure an agent of God. In any case, he is. Because um, if it wasn't meant for you to um, to and be engaged in that, God wouldn't bring it to you. God brings it to you because it's meant for you. So how we take it is up to us. We can take it that it's not from God, and therefore um, I'm I'm hurt, and, and then I'm going to, you know, tit for tat, I'm going to hurt back. But if uh, I understand that it is from God, so then I will deal with it, you know, in some of the ways that we spoke about. That's the uh, the key over here is recognizing that it, it is from God and if it is from God so then let me respond in a godly manner as opposed to um, you know just the regular human response does that make sense okay yeah it does thank you rabbi You're very welcome Marcy please share so I have a couple of ideas sure uh, one is I heard once that uh, Gehenna and this cleansing process is the complete and total understanding of how your actions affected the world. And that is the most painful thing that you can imagine. Yes, you're very, very true. That's called um, the slingshot. Um, uh, <laughs> um, in other words, your soul is shown the truth meaning your soul is shown the truth let's say you speak lush and hara right and your soul is shown the truth of what 
damage your evil tongue has done. You know, we don't see the damage. We don't feel the damage. You know, I mean, I mean, minimally we do, perhaps. But how it reverberates in the spiritual realm is much greater. Famous story with the Baal Shem Tov, two people were in his synagogue and one and they were arguing and one says to the other i'm going to tear you apart like a fish so the Baal Shem Tov took his students and he made them go in a circle and put arm in arm and then he closed the circle and all of a sudden they all started to scream because they all got the vision of what happened that in those words that the guy said i'm going to tear you apart like a fish that in those words what that did in the spiritual realms to that guy in cutting and tearing them apart spiritually not physically but spiritually what that did to that person tearing them apart so we're not privy the Moshem to make them privy that they could see in the spiritual realm what uh, what occurs so absolutely what happens is our soul goes into Gehenna means we see the truth that what is done you know what the truth is and then how I didn't live with that truth. So, for example, the saying Lashon Hara and what real damage it did. That is so painful to the soul. Just like when we hurt somebody else and we realize how much we hurt them and how wrong it was. So if we're good people, that pains us. We're pained by that. So multiply that by 60 times, <laughs> right? It's going to be so much more painful that when we recognize what we have done through our transgressions, through our sin, whether again, Lashon Hara, whatever it is that we have done. And exactly as you said, Marcy, thank you for sharing that. And I, I did have one other thought. Sure. Was that I'm, I'm in kind of a middle place with my forgiveness. I was driving the other day and somebody cut me off in traffic and I was going to be all, ah, but then... I'm like, well, you know, we, we've all had days like that. Maybe this is not a habitual offender. Maybe this is just a, oh, my goodness, I'm totally in the wrong lane, and I need to move now. Um, and, and so I was able to, like, calm myself down, and I thought, well, that's, that's pretty good. And, you know, when my daughter says, you know, I hate you, she's not saying I hate you. She's saying I'm in pain and I need something. Right. And so, like, those things are kind of easy to forgive, but then there are others that are just, like, sharing yes very good excellent excellent um okay so let me just look over here andrew um andrew andrew i saw your question where it did it go by the way whoever can write i know now please do andrew do any of us have our soul uh have our soul leave this world in the same pure state as when it entered it uh, yeah, if, again, if you're a tzaddik, if you're a righteous person, um, so then, but, you know, I, that doesn't include me. Yeah. And probably, uh, you know, probably none of us, but that's okay. Um, okay, so that was Andrew. Accept and or fight back. I don't know what that means. Asher. Does this seum qualify for a celebratory meal of wine and meat? <laughs> uh, good question, Asher. So um, probably not. Um, and in any case, the Rebbe says we should do it and not drink the wine and eat meat. Um, it, you know, right? it should bring joy to us that we finished. That's the idea. It's a permitted form of joy. That's what we're looking for, to bring more joy in the nine days so we can... Tr- transform these days um uh, davida are the sins that we did chuva for still shown to us in the heavenly realms no but there can be still a stain doesn't mean there's not a stain yeah okay 12 15 today or actually 12 o'clock we're starting uh one last thing eliana and uh, oops sorry 
<clears throat> just a reminder today we have a 10 hour feast of learning it's going to be on zoom 770 770 6085 um and um come and join us Are you saying that you're going to be on Zoom for 10 hours? No, I, I don't know if I'm going to be on Zoom for 10 hours, but there will be Zoom link for 10 hours um, of learning today between 12 noon and um, between 12 noon and um, Uh, sorry, one second, I'm just putting up. Between 12 noon and uh, 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. Yes, there will be. So that's going to be on Zoom, and it's also going to be on Chabad Montreal Facebook and uh, also Chabad Zichin uh, Facebook. So you can come and join us for lots of good learning. Um, I should have mentioned earlier. Yeah, so. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome, Eliana. Hi, yes. Um, maybe just on the back of what Marcy was saying, what if you do have someone that's an habitual offender? You know, it's like every time you turn around, they're doing something that is, you know, relatively offensive. Um, and they do it almost knowingly. Like, how do you address, I mean, can you, I mean, what's the best way to deal with that if you can't separate yourself from that person? So, you know, it doesn't mean you don't bring it up to them. I'm not saying that, you know, you need to bring it up to them and to work out with them. And, and make them aware, but don't do it in the moment that you are, um, you know, upset. Bring it up in a way when you're not upset, so that way they will be able to hear the, to hear you, your message. If, if a person has constantly brought that up for, say, years, and it still is the same cycle, is there an exit to that? So, uh, you know, that's already... That's in, I, I, that's in Tanya therapy. I can't answer that because it depends. Each case is individual. It depends. Well, you know, can't answer that specifically because I don't know what the circumstance is and who it is and so on. Um, and, and therefore, you know, might be that you need to move on or at least create proper boundaries. Okay. It might be proper boundaries in that instance. I mean, the greatest way is, again, to know that God sent this to you and it's meant for you and it's painful. But if you know that it's meant for you, you'll be able to try to accept it in some manner, in some way. That is the healthiest and best thing. And then from there, create boundaries. You know, bring it up to them or, you know, if that's going to help. Okay, yes, thank you. You're very welcome. 12.15, we're going to be doing Rambam. We're starting at 12 o'clock this whole program for 10 hours. Um, 12.15 will be Rambam, the three chapters that we do daily. Sundays is 12.15 during the week. Monday through Friday is 12.45. And then there will be, uh, there's a whole schedule that we just put up. Okay? Yeah, so start at 12 or 12.15 if you want, or anytime for 10 hours we're going to be on. Going to be various young rabbis. And I somehow got included in the young rabbis from Montreal who are going to be sharing throughout the day because it's the three weeks we need to build our holy temple and bring Mashiach. So we're going to build it through learning about it. And then hopefully that will bring the ultimate building of Mashiach now. With that, I bid everywhere uh, one, a wonderful day, uh, a good week, um, and we'll see you in half an hour in any case. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege, a pleasure to share with you, Natanya. Have a wonderful, great day. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you for joining.